Well, my family was musical, and I showed musical talent early in my childhood, like I was about three or four. And I was always involved in singing, and uh, I didn't I didn't play instruments too much. I just uh, it was mostly singing in the choir. The first instrument was the piano. Well, no, uh, the first instruments were the guitar. Uh, the trumpet. And I think the piano, yeah. Oh, I lived in Chicago when I was in elementary school. Well, the only thing I remember was I, I, I wasn't a, a well-behaved kid in the classroom. So they put me back one, one year. I don't know if I stayed back a whole year or they put me, put me back in the same year. Uh, in, instead of the later year. We had these ink wells in, on our desk, in our desks, and in front of me was a, was a girl that sat there with long hair, and I used to take her long hair and put it in the ink well, and that upset everybody. Well, when I was in high school, I played the uh, saxophone, alto saxophone, and the violin. So I was in the uh, violin string quartet, and uh, it was time for the Allstate Orchestra to take shape in uh, Harrisburg, and I was I was good enough to make that on on, on violin. But I kept playing the saxophone. I played the saxophone in dance bands. I, I played with uh, with a group in Aliquippa. They were all good musicians. And I played with them for a few years. With the Lee Tolfa Orchestra, yes. It was a big band. There was Sonny on the piano. There was Mo on the bass. There was uh, Ed on first lead alto, first alto, myself on third alto, Tony Barsett's on tenor, uh, Emilio Tolfo was the leader on trumpet, Mazaka played trumpet. I enrolled first at the University of Pittsburgh in pre-dent, and I was playing in a band and. And they said, they, I told them I went to University of Pittsburgh and I'm going to major in in uh, dentistry. They said, you're crazy, you should be in piano. So I listened to them and I quit. I, I withdrew from uh, University of Pittsburgh and I enrolled in Duquesne. Duquesne University for Music. And there I studied uh, the piano, and I, I did some composing. And I took all the, the regular lessons uh, that they gave. Uh, I sang in a choir. And uh, after I graduated from Duquesne, I got my teaching job in California, Pennsylvania, and I taught there for about a half a year, and they told me they wanted me to uh, re report to Lackland Air Force Base for uh, duty, because I, I came out as the, first, as the second lieutenant when I graduated from Duquesne in the ROTC. And, they wanted me to leave my teaching position, and I wrote them a letter. I said, uh, I'm just finishing my first semester of teaching. Could you please allow me to finish one year? Then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, 
I'll get back into the Air Force, and which I did. And then in the Air Force, I was a second lieutenant, and I was a, a tactical instructor. I, I taught basic trainees. Well, I thought I'd stay in. I tried to get into the band. I tried to get into uh, where they translate into intelligence. They wouldn't accept me because I was not under the code of military justice. They had too many officers, too many second lieutenants, and they, they, they made us as temporary. And we, we were not subject to the code of military justice. So I couldn't hold any important position. I tried to get into the band. I tried to get into intelligence. And uh, I couldn't do it. So I, I, I got stuck in, uh, in uh, teaching, officer training. And uh, then that's when I decided I'm getting out of here. Now, when I, when I got out of the Air Force, I got a job first in uh, geez, I forget the name in Jersey, New Jersey. Anyway, I I lived. I got a job in that in that town. I was the uh, band director, and I stayed there for maybe a year or so. Then I. Westfield had an opening, so I applied for the opening in Westfield. And that Janet, whatever her last name was, came to observe me in that, in that orange, <laughs> came to observe me, and she liked what, I, what she saw. So she gave me that job, and I became the uh, seventh grade music teacher. And what I had, I prepared a boys' chorus to sing with the men's chorus in Westfield for the Christmas program. I prepared "Oh Holy Night," with the, they sang a solo along with the, with the men's chorus, and I got a lot of uh, praise for that. When I was in Westfield, Walter Pipiuk was a member of that chorus, and he was like a heavyweight. So he, he, he came up to Westfield one time, and I met him there. I said, they were looking for a choir director. Would you be interested? I said, sure. So he put me up as, as the choir director for the Ukrainian male chorus of Lehigh Valley. And I got the job, and I was a male a choir, male chorus choir director for many years. I took lessons with Sergei Jadov, conductor of the of the uh, the men's chorus. I took uh, conducting lessons with him, and he had me write some music too. For my, at the same time I was conducting my choir, the uh, Lehigh Valley Chorus of Lehigh Valley, of Allentown. And then I, I took lessons with uh, Hugh Ross. When I, was, uh, I, when I was teaching at Westfield, I applied to, uh, to attend a summer course at, uh, what's the name of that place? Anyway, it was a state, all state, all state orchestra. And I was accepted as a conductor. And I, Hugh Ross was the director. He, he had a big choir in New York City. He was the director of that choir. And at the end of the session, I asked him if I could study with him. And he said, yes. So then we, I went to New York, and I studied with him. 
Then after after Westfield, we got married, and my wife didn't want to move. I thought we would move to where I was living. I had an apartment and stuff in Westfield, so she didn't want to go. So I had to quit. So I I, I quit Westfield, and I went to. Uh, I applied somehow. I got the. I got an application in the White Hall, and I got that job. When I went to White Hall, that was all jockstrap sports. Music was like <laughs> nobody goes to concerts. In Westfield, when I had a concert, I had the whole talent come on to hear that concert. I loved it. But when I moved to uh, Whitehall, it was different. Sports was sports were the big thing. But even in in in, uh, in Whitehall, I drew the guys together, and we had a men, men's chorus, which was pretty good. And we sang. Well, my, I had the choir too, so we sang at the bank in Allentown for a concert. Then I, in addition to that, I had the barbershop quartet. I met Joe Weber and, and Augie, Augie Vankovic. They're both accordion players, good musicians. And uh, Joe Weber talked to me about getting a, a quartet together. I said, sure, get the guys together and I'll, I'll get the music. Uh, I'll be your instructor. And they agreed. Our choir was pretty good. And we were singing good, uh, important music. It was pretty good. And we all decided, let's make a recording. I said, good. So I got Pete Helfrich. And record, we recorded it in church. When I took the job in Whitehall, uh, I used to go to that, mu that music store, Henry John's, Henry John's Music Store. And uh, they were, I used to go there a lot because I knew Charlie Burns and I knew Joe Oberecker. They all taught there, Ronnie Protsky. And, uh, I, I heard that they, they were selling. They wanted to sell the place. So I came in there and I told them I would be interested. So I made an offer. They accepted it. And I took it over. And that's, that's when I met Charlie Burns. He was a teacher. And... Uh, I was sitting at the desk one day in the store and Charlie Burns came came over to me at the desk. He says, hey, you play the piano, don't you? I said, yeah. Well, my piano player is leaving. I'm looking for a piano player. Would you be interested? I said, yes. So he gave me an audition and I passed it. I got the job. <laughs> he wanted me to play like uh, George Shearing with those chords. I could do that. Bobby Vinton. Uh, well, we went to school together. I lived in uh, Ambridge. And Bobby Vinton lived in the neighboring town. I forget what the name of the town was. But somehow we went to school together. And then uh, when I joined the uh, Duquesne University for music, and Bobby came in. He came in later. And he came in on clarinet and oboe. And we had a, we had a woodwind quartet going. And uh, Max Adams was the leader, and he says, 
Walter, can can you find a, a, an oboe player? We had a, a young girl playing oboe. She was good, but for some reason she quit. So we had to find another oboe player, and I got Bobby Vinton to join. So we played together for the longest time. And I played in his band. He had a dance band, too. He played in his town, and I played with him quite a bit. And at one time in the summer, this drummer in Bobby Vinton's band had to had a summer place up there where, where Bobby Vinton lived. And uh, we had a party. We had like a, a, a week's party there. And uh, Bobby Bobby Vinton and I stayed pretty much together. I have pictures of him, private pictures, with he and me. Uh, and that's when he was singing uh, pretty much and writing, writing music. And at that time, Bobby Vinton was taking uh, voice lessons in New York. And I was taking some kind of lessons, too, in New York. And we both bumped into each other on Times Square, of all places, full of millions of people. But that's where we bumped into each other. I says, what are you doing, Bobby? I'm taking voice lessons. That was before he became a star. And I says, I... I was taking sax lessons, I think, somewhere. And uh, so in no time at all, Bobby became a star. He started to sing solos. And then when I moved, when we moved to Northampton, there's a place called Penn Peak outside of Northampton. And Bobby Vinton sang there one year. And I told Ann and Sean, and they both wanted to go because Sean's mother was a fan of Bobby Vinton. So we went there, and after the concert, we stayed around to see him in, his, in the back in the back, uh, the back room. We got his autograph, and Sean got his autograph for his mother. Roy Mayorga, I met him in at Whitehall, Whitehall High School, at not that high school, but the middle school, where he played the drum. I, I liked the way he played, and he was he was a very good student. He never gave me any trouble, any problems. So I invited him to play the drums for all my programs, choir programs, and he did. He was good. And he, he was like in seventh or eighth grade at that time. So two, two, two people, two big guys I know, Bobby Benton and Roy Mayorga. For the first, first time I was, I was uh, interested in Roy, and not Roy, in uh, Gary was with Shadow Gallery. I heard their music, and they used to practice down there on Main Street <laughs> in a garage, Shadow Gallery. And I said, holy smokes, that's my band. Jake Caligas. I met him in, in, in high school, in, uh, in uh, the middle school as a guitar player. And I heard him, I heard him play the guitar. I, turned, I said, this guy's good. So I invited him to play with the, with the choir. And I invited him to play. He had his own group, little group. I invited him to perform for my concert. And he liked that. And his father was a teacher at the high school who I knew because I was there too. I met Tom Kozik at the high school. And the first time I met him was when I had a study hall, and he was in that study hall. And he used to come in 
throw his books on the table and sit like this. I said, Tom, study. This is a study hall. He wouldn't listen. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to take you to Mr. Northup. And he kept saying, are you going to take me to Mr. Northup today? I said, I may. I never did because I, I thought Tom was a good kid. And I, I did see him play the guitar once. And man, he was so he was faster than Charlie Burns. So I got him in touch with Charlie Burns and he in he enlisted with him. He enrolled in his as a student. And he, he stayed with him for quite a while. But he was he was better than Burns in speed. He was really good. And then he got <laughs> After we left, after I left, I, that was it. What's the name of that place they played in? Skytop. Skytop. No, I was still there. I was still there doing something. I think playing the piano. So I went to hear the band that one night. And there is this uh, Kozik. Tom Kozik, I, I went up to my wave to him, and he came, we, they took their break, and he came, stood with me at the, ba at the back there. And we had a nice conversation. <laughs> he said, are you gonna take me to M Mr. Northup? <laughs> I said, no, you made it. Tom, you made it. You made the big time already. Oh yeah, and Interfest. That that was one of the best shows I ever attended. And it's too bad it had to break up. But what can you do? Nobody wanted to take it over. Chad and Rob were in charge of that, and that's a lot of work. They got all kind of bands from all over the world. They used to come there. The one guy was in a band there, and I told him I have a friend of Rhodes. He says, you do? I says, yeah, can I see it? Yep. So he came over that one day and played it. And he, he wanted to ship it to He wanted me to ship it to him. But uh, something happened. He backed out. I met Keith Emerson at Nearfest. And we had a nice conversation. He's a nice fella, nice guy. You know, some, sometimes you get these smart Alex musicians. They think they're stars, but he didn't. He was very humble, and we had a nice talk.